Hi everyone, this video is on the homogeneous transformation matrix and I've got my cat here to assist, only very briefly. Let's let you go. Off you go. Off. Shoo. Right, so previously we looked at the rotation matrix and now we're moving to transformation matrices. And here we are on our roadmap. So we've gone from rotations and now we're considering transformations. So how can we describe the relative position and orientation between reference frames? So remember that position and orientation describes pose. So here's a problem scenario. How should the robot position its end effector? So we have an environment with different actors, a camera, an object, a robot arm, and our reference frame or the inertial frame. And so given the following poses, that is a combination of rotation and translation, we have uh, our pose from inertial to camera, pose from camera to object, pose from inertial to base, and our pose from base to end effector, then what is the pose from the end effector to the object? So we can combine rotation and translation. So here we have three different reference frames, each with the translation vector and the rotation matrix between each. So translation and rotation. And the question is, given these three reference frames, one, two, and three, how can we combine the rotations that is are in the special orthogonal group, which is a three by three matrix, and the translation P, which is a three by one vector. So how can we combine them mathematically? It's not possible to concatenate the information like so. We can't just multiply uh, rotation and translation by putting them together. Uh, this is because when we combine rotation and translation like this, we have a three by four matrix and what we need is to expand it to a four by four matrix. So here you can see the transform from one to threes, the transform from one to two by two to three. And in each of these transforms, I have the rotation component, translation component, zero, 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 one. Rotation, translation, zero, zero, one. Right, so this is a four by four matrix and we can multiply this through. So we'll have R1 to 2 by R2 to 3, a rotation by this translation plus this translation. And this gives us our transformation matrix from 1 to 3. So transform from here to here. And this format is called a homogeneous transformation matrix. So we have our rotation in the special orthogonal group in three dimensions, and we have our translation, which is a set of real values in three dimensions. Therefore, when we combine them like so, we have the rotation component here, which is a three by three matrix, our translation component, which is a three by one vector. And to make this a four by four matrix where the mathematics works out, we need to put zero, 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 one on the bottom here. So we say that this is in the special Euclidean group, and this describes both rotation and translation in three-dimensional Euclidean space. So let's look at the inverse of the transformation matrix. So we have the transform from one to two given like so, with the rotation from one to two and the translation from one to two. And then it's opposite two to one, the will be given by this format. So we know that the inverse of the rotation is its transpose, but to get the inverse of this uh, translation component, I have to do inverse of this matrix, sorry, the transpose, yes, the inverse, with a negative sign in front. And then it has to be the condition that T2 to 1 is the inverse of T1 to 2. So let's multiply these two together. T1 to 2 by 2 to 1 with the diagonal elements here equivalent is given like this. So this and this. And let's multiply this through. We know that this will be the identity and this will be the identity. And therefore we're left with this and these two will cancel out and give zero. And so we have this, which is the identity matrix. So yes, this must be the inverse or the opposite of T1 to two. 
So again, we return to how should the robot position its end effector? First, we write out our chain of transforms. So end effector to object is given by end effector to base, base to inertial frame, inertial frame to camera, and camera to object. So the diagonals here match up and will cancel out, and we're left with end effector to object. Then we just need to invert the relevant transforms. So if we have base to end effector, then we just invert it. End effector to base is the inverse of base to end effector. And the same as if we have inertial to base, then we take the inverse of inertial to base to get base to inertial. So another thing we might want to consider is what is the distance from the end effector to a point? So given a point specified in the inertial frame, that is with this superscript i, then we have the transform from inertial to base and the transform from base to end effector frame. How far is the point from the end effector frame? So in what direction should the robot move? So now we have to consider point transformations. So I define a point in frame B here, like so, with the superscript B. And I know the transform from A to B. Then what is the distance of the point with respect to frame A? How can we describe this mathematically? And we can't just multiply this 4 by 4 transformation matrix by a 3 by 1 vector. It's not going to work, so we need to do a bit of manipulation. So to do point transformations, we need to use a homogeneous point transformation. That is, I've now changed this translation vector with a little tilde on top to denote the homogeneous form. And this will be a 4 by 1 vector. So I'm going to expand this out. You'll see I have my translation vector with a little 1 on the bottom. So it's a, a 3 by 1 and a 1 by 1, which gives me a 4 by 1. And the mathematics multiplying by a 4 by 4 matrix will work out. And when we solve this, we will have this vector. And therefore, the point with respect to A is the rotation from A to B multiplied by the point in B plus the translation vector from frame A to frame B. So the rotation of A to B multiplied by B gives the point P from the perspective of A. And then we add the translation vector from A to B. So what is the distance from the end effector to the point? We have the transform from the inertial frame to the base frame, given by this. The base to the inertial frame is just the inverse, which we previously learnt, given by this format, where we take the transpose, and for the translation component, we add a negative sign. And then the base to the end effector frame is given by this transformation matrix. And then we just need to get the point in base frame B. So we do our homogeneous point transformation, like so. And then the distance from the end effector of the point with respect to frame B is given by the transformed point in base frame minus the translation from base to end effector. So to summarize transformation matrices, when we combine the rotation and translation like so in this matrix format, this is a homogeneous transformation matrix, which is four by four. This is in the special Euclidean group. Multiplying transforms produces another transform, and the inverse of a transform has this format. To do a homogeneous point transformation, we must modify our translation vectors, or our point vectors. And this is the solution to transforming between frames.